All right, so now that I've got an image that uh, I am good with, I'm going to process it. So processing, processing is really uh, just the capture one way of saying um, export. Um, I honestly, I'm still getting, getting the hang of this idea of doing things as opposed to just right clicking and exporting, which I got so used to with Lightroom. Um, but when it comes down to it, this actually is a pretty professional way of doing things um, and fits into a, a pro workflow pretty well. So you got your process recipes, process recipe, and process summary. These are the three things you're going to need when you want to process an image. Um, in the process recipes, you have all of the different recipes you've made. You can add a recipe by clicking on the plus. Um, obviously, you can delete them with a minus. I have a couple different ones here. I've got prints, quick proofs, edit in Photoshop, uh, blog size ones, web portfolio ones, um, etc. So they're really, uh, there's just some of my basic ones. These are the ones I use most frequently. Sometimes I'll edit, add a new one um, if I need it, but these are really the ones I'm going to. So let's say I want to use this as, um, I want to make a print size one for these. So it's really important to note that in your recipes, when you click on or off a one of these recipes, whenever you click process, it's going to run all the recipes that are selected, um, not just the one that you have highlighted. So it's really important to know. It also gives you um, gives you the option to run multiple recipes. So it's it's cool. Like so, if you say you want to make a CD um, for clients of full size resolution. You're going to click those ones, uh, you're going to click that recipe, and then let's say you also want to, at the same time, export a folder that you're going to upload to a proofing gallery that are going to be a different size. Um, you can click that one. So it's going to do all that at once without having to, you know, select different export settings, etc. You can have a recipe for each one. So to edit a recipe, you're going to click on that um, particular recipe, go down into the process recipe, for me, um, it looks like my prints dropped a little lower than I want them to. But um, so for prints here, we've got my basic settings. It's going to be JPEG, um, quality 80, 81, whatever, ICC profile, sRGB. That's what my lab uses. Resolution 300. Scale is where you can change up the uh, size. Um, for my, this is where my blog images. I use a width by height. And I change it to um, pixels, and, I'm, and I always change it up to uh, 900 by um, 700, I think is what I use. So fix just uses the 100%. Um, open with is where you can uh, do something after the fact. So after this image gets exported, you can uh, have it open in, in CS5. Um, I actually have a preset, a process recipe that does that. So if I want to, it. Um, adds it to a folder, a subfolder saying uh, to be edited in Photoshop and then it opens it in Photoshop for me. So it kind of lets me move into Photoshop and uh, pretty seamlessly have it um, added to my folder here. Um, so going into the advanced section here, it's going to default to the output folder. I actually like to have each one of these recipes drop into a different root folder. So you do that by selecting folder. Um, for me, I have an area on my computer I just call photo exports. Uh, this is totally up to however you do your workflow. I like to have all my photo exports, exports easily accessible, so I put them in one place. Um, I have a to print folder. Um, that's what I'm going to use as my root folder. So by putting that there under root folder, that's going to be the overarching folder that it's going to drop the images in. The nice thing about this is so that's set. It's always going to be at that base level. I can change up the subfolder. So I want these ones. Let's say I want it to be. So this is Melissa, um, athlete portrait. So I have that in the subfolder. It's going to automatically drop it as a subfolder of that path that I selected. Important thing is that Obviously, every time I do a print, I do one of these uh, recipes here. I got to make sure I go to advanced, change my subfolder to what I want. Once I got that going, all I got to do, click process. It's going to run it. Uh, that'll create the folder if it doesn't exist. It'll add the image. 
it's done right here. Um, if you want to see the process, if you you want to, if you are exporting a couple images here, so I'm selecting three images here. Click in process to see these all going. Here you go to the batch tab. It tells you the status um, of how far you're going through in your in your queue here. Um, so that's kind of cool. So uh, you know, so one other thing I actually wanted to talk about um, that's really cool is going to be in the um, levels tool. So I actually um, create, so you can, you know, you're going to start when you first get the program, it's going to be set up with one levels tool and levels is going to be an RGB levels. So the thing is you can make a level, you can keep adding levels tools and make one for one for red, one for green, one for blue. Um, I've already done that. So I've got my RGB up top. I've got my red, I've got my green, I've got my blue. Um, What's cool about this is this is the levels tool, as I'm sure you you might know, and um, in CS5 is a or in Photoshop is a great way to get a really accurate um, color and contrast um, adjustment at a very kind of precise level. Um, one of the ways you do that, and it's this image is pretty color correct, so it doesn't really need it. But let's say you had um, all this green in the middle here. So there's a big space here. You can see there's a tiny space there. Um, and then if there was a big space here, all you'd have to do to color correct uh, this image and add some contrast is you're going to drag these, the little ends, to match up with the end of, the, um, of that bulk of the levels histogram. Um, you probably couldn't notice a difference right there. But... What, by doing that in those three tools, your in those three levels panels, you actually can color correct your image um, almost perfectly, and then you can warm it up uh, using the color balance tool. Um, it's also a great way to get rid of haze in an image. So if you've got a lot of times, if you have a uh, image like a landscape that's very hazy, you're going to notice a um, couple levels histograms that are going to be really off onto one side, and there's going to be a big blank area. By dragging these over, the ends over, um, you're going to get yourself a nice, bring out that contrast. Um, so that's a really cool tool. Uh, that's yet another reason you don't have to go to Photoshop by using Capture One. Um, so really cool. That's just kind of how I want to end this one. So hope you enjoyed it.